And there's a lot of houses like this in Los Angeles or the Bay Area or, you know, those Palm Springs, those concentrations of mid-century modern. I mean, it's a modern house. It's flat. It's open. There's a lot of glass. People in Fresno kind of don't get that because it's not a traditional Fresno home. You know, they want a ranch house with a pitched roof and a white picket fence, and it's gonna have paint the house white or a, no pops of color anywhere or anything like that. So when they come here, it's kind of like, I, I don't know kind of what to do. The home was built in 1962 by a local architect by the name of Robin Gay McCline. He went to school at Berkeley, graduated in 51, I believe, with Ray Cappy, and came back to Fresno after that, started work with another local architect by the name of Robert Stevens. The special thing, at least to me, about this house is the symmetry. And so this house, basically, you could draw a line down the middle of it, and it's like an open book. So it's basically equal on both sides. Seeing this house at night, I think, is the best way to view the house. It's got a really amazing screen out front that kind of glows when the lights are on inside the house, and it kind of draws you in. It pulls you in, and it kind of wants to give you a hug. <laughs> you know, I mean, you, once you get, you want to find out what's behind that screen, and then once you get in, it's like, oh man, this is really cool. And and there's layers, you know, as it goes through. I feel like this was the home for us. It really was. It fits us. You know, they say you buy a dog to fit your personality. Well, I feel like we bought a house that fits our personality, and it's kind of like that feeling. But when we lived at the other house, we would ride our bikes. And some of our date, we would either drive or ride our bikes around the neighborhood, and he would tell me, oh, this house is built by this person, or do you see the different you know, roof lines and things like that? That kind of helped me get educated in it. And this was one of the homes that it was very unique. We even wrote the owners a letter saying, you know, if you ever buy this house or <laughs> sell this, if you ever, yeah, it was we really, stalking. I know, but you know, when you want something so bad, it's like you kind of just, you know, feel that energy of, I just need to know if, if there's a way to purchase this house. It's like a head scratcher. You drive by and you're like, I wonder what's behind that screen. I really want to see what's behind that screen. And so, you know, I drive by and Bill, Micah, the, the original owners, you know, he would be out front getting the mail or, or uh, uh, doing yard work. And man, he probably thought this guy's, this guy's stalking me. I may have to call the police or something, but I would always chat him up and, and you know, hey, if you're ever interested in selling, I really love your house. And just talking to him about, you know, when it was built and who the architect was. And, you know, he was he was a super nice guy. He would always, oh, no, I'm not gonna sell. Unfortunately, he, he passed away. I think he raised three children here. They wanted mom to move closer to them. And I believe they live up in Oregon. And so when that happened, my good friend, Eldon, he bought the house. And I, I was living in another house at the time. And my thought was, okay, great. It's in good hands. At least no one's going to mess it up. And, and he didn't. And he was here for probably three years. And he knew that I always wanted the house. And, and he said, no, I already have a couple of buyers that would buy your house. And so long story short, it kind of all fell into place. The weird part about the story is, is that Eldon was moving to Fredonia, which is Ray Cappy in Los Angeles. He had lived there previously in the 90s and always wanted to purchase one of the condos there. And it's actually the condo that he rented for years. And those people called him up and said, hey, we're ready to sell. The, the people who purchased our Cliff May, they wanted that Cliff May when we were looking at it. So it, it was kind of this weird stars were aligned and everybody got what they wanted, you know, and it was like the shift, you know, but that's really it. I mean, that's basically how we came about it. As far as Fresno having a big modern scene, it's growing. I, there's people here that are interested in it. Unfortunately, a lot of the homes, even the office buildings, the churches, um, are being modified to the point of not being able to bring them back. And that's what I'm trying to bring light to, is to get more people involved to appreciate these types of homes, these types of buildings. Fresno's a really kind of a, 
a melting pot of two of the really big schools of architecture, right? Berkeley and, and Berkeley in, you know, in the Bay Area and USC uh, in Southern California. And we, we're lucky enough here to have architects from both of those communities that practiced here in, in the 50s and 60s, and they shared ideas. So you have this blending of both those kind of schools of, of thought. At least this architect, Gay McLean, was taught in, at Berkeley, so he has more of that Northern California style. I, I would think there's a lot of Asian influences in his architecture. The screen out front really is, to me, very like Asian inspired. He was a teacher a while back. When he gets into something, he's, he wants everybody to understand it or be educated in it. And I think the things that are happening are people aren't educated in it. Yeah. And it's all an interest too. If people aren't interested in it, they don't care, right? Like what Palm Springs does, do more modernism things. We've been trying to incorporate things like that here in Fresno or even Bakersfield. Why I wasn't interested in that until I met you and it opened my eyes up to a whole different world, which I think you can do. Really wanted to make it an oasis for us. We really enjoy Palm Springs and that's kind of our way of having our vacation, relaxing. So we kind of wanted to bring Palm Springs to Fresno. The moment you drive into the driveway, yeah, you're already wondering, okay, this house is different. And for some people not really knowing what mid-century modern is, um, like I was, you want to know more about it. The first thing is that courtyard that you walk into. It's right before the front door. So you're not even in the house yet, which is amazing already. But it's wanting, it's slowly drawing you in, you know, to like, okay, come a little closer, you know? You don't feel like you're in this world right now. It definitely brings you to a whole different place and somewhere where it's relaxing and comfortable, it makes you feel home is here. And that's what we've tried to do. I feel like we've done a really great job in making it work for a family of three with a, with a kid. And we've really made it feel like whatever is going on out there, we can come here and just leave everything out the door. Again, it's the house is going to give you a hug. You're going to open that door and you're here. It's, it's calming, peaceful. There's that connection with the outside, but it's warm still here. And there's, it's not, I don't find it cold. That's a lot of people with modern, modern architecture or mid-century architecture is a cold feeling, but I don't get that feeling at all here.